Hey guys, this is GM Ballet with GM Surreal. We're here to bring you a video update review for the Rising Force patch. Now this is going to focus primarily on the PvP aspect, the mission battle system. Yeah, this feature is something that I'm actually really looking forward to just because it allows players to be able to show their dominance over other players. So initially, uh, you, you would basically be reliant on nation versus nation, while this feature allows you to be reliant primarily on yourself. Now, uh, the pro gaming scene is moving so fast right now. There's a lot of momentum, a lot of people behind it. It's c incredibly lucrative, so we're trying to implement something that's going to exemplify that within Cabal. I had a chance to work on the um, Cabal Global Camp, and it, you know, it, it, was a, it had that pro gaming feel, and this is what we're going for. Another special thing about this is that Venus and Mercury, Mercury are combined into one competitive pool, so you're going to be able to play against everyone in your service to see who truly is the best. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and hop in straight in between a battle between uh, myself and GM Balat. It'll be from my point of view. Uh, right off the bat here, you're going to see the Arch Iridium set on my character, the Warrior. Um, it doesn't glow like this uh, initially. You have to upgrade it to plus 15, of course. Very cool set, very hard to get. The instance is incredibly difficult. It's the new BF3, so for those of you who like PvE, you're going to be stimulated. You've got a lot of stuff to do. There's uh, certainly a lot of, there's more than just the mission battle which you're going to be seeing today. You're going to want to check out the update review um, document. Here we're going into the Hellforge weapons. These are new weapon skins that are going to be available. Very dark, very sinister looking. I love them. They match the new stuff that's coming out, and they also flow really well with a lot of our older costumes. Yeah, they look really nice on my Vampire Epaulet. So if we see over here, I'm actually going to head on over to this NPC. Uh, the Capella Nation will be able to enter the mission battle from the Green Despair NPC, and I'm going to um, hop on over to... Uh, Desert Scream, where the Procyon nation will be able to enter, so they'll just have to go to this NPC right here, and uh, and this is basically going to be the mission battle screen. Now, there's a lot of different things here. You see the ladder, ba the ladder tab, which involves the rated ladder system. Now, this is o only open for a certain period throughout the day because we want to consolidate all our skilled players, all our really enthusiastic, competitive people all at one time so you get matched evenly standards a little more casual you can open up rooms at any time of the day password protect them go in with your friends if you want to and then of course you have rankings see who's best you there's also some pull down tabs see who's the best of each particular cl class and then you have history which shows your personal history and how you've performed yeah for ranked rating you see that it's a standard elo system and what this basically means is that uh all players will start off on a default 1000 points and with wins and losses, it'll either go up or down. And to, in cases of queuing, uh, the the queue system will basically try to find you a player that's basically uh, give or take 50 points, which is ideal for uh, your queue system. So uh, if your if the queue actually extends to a longer period and you can't actually find someone within that range, it'll just uh, extend it a bit more. Uh, you might also want to take note that you only see. Uh, Frozen Coliseum. We're going to be adding more mission battles soon. Maybe scale it up to three players. Maybe more 1v1s. There's a lot lot we can do with this system and we're excited to see what you guys are going to do with it. Yeah, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to try to create a game. Oh, well, basically a room over here. And it's just standard. I mean public or non-public. And I'll just enter the name right here. Live sh oh, stream. 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 Did it. Done. Good name. So I'm going to create the room right here and wait for Blat to join up and ready. I'm just going to start rolling my face across the keyboard. Hopefully something effective will happen. There and it is. There it is. Okay, so let's just go ahead and hop into the game. And so you'll see the uh, initial uh, map structure. So we'll go ahead and have Blat uh, talk about the architecture. Alright, now this is an asymmetrical map. There's three NPC objectives. First person 500 points is going to win the battle. The person who has the most amount of points at the end of the 10 minutes is going to win. These NPC objectives are worth points and they provide you buffs as well. There's two towers at each player's respective base that deals damage and is also an objective that can be killed, but this is very difficult. Yeah, so both players will initially start off on uh, 50 points, as you can see from the top right, and so players will be able to um, take this initial points and open up the buff shop and they can actually purchase a buff either an attack or a defensive one 
Uh, I'm gonna look through the buffs now. Each one of these buffs are extremely, um, extremely potent, and they stay with you even during death. And I figured uh, my best, my best bet would be to purchase an attack buff immediately, since it wouldn't be too much of a big deal, and I can go through these barriers much quicker. So I'm gonna pop BM2 over here and just try to knock down this barrier as quick as I can. And if you notice, the map is very condensed, so if you scroll all the way out, you can actually see the entire map. And as you can see in the background, you can see Scumbag Blad over there, who actually went through his barrier already, because I was initially introducing all the, the buff shop and other features, and he was knocking away at that barrier. Um, a little bit on that, I am the best player in Cabal. So um, I've never lost ever, so I'm going to keep that momentum going throughout this entire fight. It's very easy to keep that when you cheat. Rude. Look. <laughs> So I'm gonna take down this barrier and I see Balad's already going to his Ice Guardian. And so I'm gonna head on over to this Ice Guardian and try to take it down as quick as possible. Cause the Ice Guardian actually gives 40 points and a buff of its own. And so this is extremely important and this strategy to get your Ice Guardian is just one of uh, one cookie cutter build that of many that you can do. Yeah, uh, as uh, GM Surreal pointed out, there is you know no particular one fundamental way to start. Uh, if you want to, you can circumvent, go straight to your opponent's base. There's a separate wall, uh, which you saw on the right-hand side at the beginning of the fight, and you, that'll actually lead you directly to your opponent's Ice Guardian. So if you want to get a pick, like a steal, uh, take some points, maybe engage your opponent, that's something you can do. There is no cookie-cutter way to start this. Yeah, so I took out my Ice Guardian over here, and I'm going to uh, look to engage. Since I have two buffs, but there's a barrier over here blocking me for him. So I'm going to go around and have him take out the Ice Lord's barrier and try to engage right here. So I'm going to turn around, chunk him really hard so he has to get out of the line of sight and I'm going to fully buff up. Once I fully buff up, he actually made the incredible big mistake of actually charging at me while I was ready to attack and I actually two shot him. So he got face rolled really hard. You know, when I do things, they're generally incredible. Um... I went around the corner, buffed up, went there with, uh, you know, half my health, lost the fight. Ouch. That was painful. So I'm going to actually go to the Ice Lord, but I misjudged the timing since early in the mission uh, battle, death timers are very minuscule, so he was able to get up immediately as soon as I started attacking the Ice Lord, so I had to turn away. And so now I'm in a, bit, I'm in a very bad spot right here, um, being sandwiched between Balad and the Ice Lord. And Balad BM3, so I'm actually tanking the Ice Lord as Balad's hitting me, so I need to turn on Balad. In hindsight, I probably should have ran away to um, to basically rubber band the, the Ice Lord and, and try to see if I could steal it however I stayed to fight. Um, one thing to note, when both Ice Guardians are dead, the Ice Lord's going to pick up a buff. He's going to get an additional attack, an AoE attack called um, Ice Spike. It's pretty dangerous. Gives him a little boost there. Yeah, so I'm in a really bad spot right now considering... I died and he actually took out the Ice Lord right here which brings up his points to 250 to my 140 and he gets the Ice Lord buff so I'm in a really bad spot. I need to try to pick my battles very safely and I see that he's actually going back to his base so I'm going to try to steal his Ice Guardian over here. Now during this time I'm actually at my base. Um, I have a little bit of point advantage so I'm going to want to buy some buffs to turn the battle towards my favor. Yeah, this is something I noticed since his points went to zero, so I know that he purchased uh, all the buffs he could. And so I'm, I misjudged how far, how much damage I could do to the Ice Guardian, so he actually found me as I was fighting it. So I'm in a really bad spot over here as I'm tanking uh, the Ice Guardian and a fully buffed Balad. And so in hindsight, I probably should have took out the Ice Guardian and denied him that buff, however, uh, I didn't. Yeah, this is a really big win on my part. I got points for the kill, points for the guardian, and another buff. So yeah, I'm looking pretty good. I'm sure. And as you can see from the points, he already caught up in uh, in that aspect, even though he purchased 250 worth of buffs. So over here, I'm going to buff up and see if I can find a good uh, position to fight. And as I see Balad over here, he took my ice guardian. He's charging at me. However, he made the mistake of having his BM3 run out, so I'm going to charge at him immediately. And so he battle modes over here, which is a mistake in my opinion. So I'm going to try to fight him over here. Now this is really bad. I don't know exactly what I was doing. I kind of went in, went around the corner to break LOS, get, put some distance, and I go into BM2. Not the smartest decision, you know. This is a really brute force kind of fight. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm down a little. 
Uh, maybe I can win with uh, my buff advantage, but here uh, you are. You excellent kill there. Um, all objectives are down, though. You're going to uh, cruise around the map, see yeah, some I... different things. Oh, there's some owls there. Ex 433 owls. Excellent pick. Good Thanks. move. Thanks. It was a very bad position. You see, I barely won that fight, even though he was fully buffed. And so... Um... It was a bad timing for me since no buffs were up when I took him down. However, this Guardian's up, so I'm going to see if I can try to do damage as you're tanking the Guardian. But you turn on me, and I'm in a really bad spot over here. I can't actually fight you, so I'm going to try to run to your base. And to explain a little of this element is that these uh, each base has a tower. As you can see, this tower actually uh, has a health pool of its own, and if you actually take it down, you get 200 points, so that 200 points could actually make or break a game. And so, if the tower does, if the tower does do damage to uh, the opposite player. So if they, the tower gets the last hit on you, you basically deny that kill from uh, your opponent. So I'm gonna try to deny myself over here, but unfortunately, Balad actually gets the last hit. Yeah. Now this is a more advanced tactic. I don't know if you uh, guys are familiar with the MOBA genre, but. The deny is a advanced stra strategy you want to implement to take points away from your opponent. Excellent move. Yeah, so I'm in a really bad spot now. The lad has 280 points, 320 now because he took down his Ice Guardian. So I'm going to buff up over here and I see that he's taking on the Ice Lord over here. So I'm going to try to I'm going to try to buff up in battle mode and see if I can steal this Ice Lord. However, I make the crucial mistake of underestimating how much damage Balad does and the Ice Lord was actually taken out and now I'm in a really bad fight considered you just got the Ice Lord fight but you do mess up your skill order over here so I'm able to do a ton of DPS over here and actually be in a good position. Yeah this is a perfect example of how a highly skilled player can you know turn the fight towards their favor using the combo system, using some LOS, some fancy dodging, fancy moves. This is a really good play on your part. Keep me out of range. Uh, use that damage to your advantage. Pick up a kill. Excellent. Yeah. I had to I had to space myself out to get that kill. However, again, uh, there wasn't a buff immediately available. This Ice Guardian of mine just popped up. However, my health pool is so low, and Balad will actually be up right here, and this engage will probably determine who wins or loses fight considering how close the points are yeah this is pretty much yeah it looks like we're gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe standing combo fight um you know i have some buffs i believe you do have the ice guardian buff that plays to your favor a little bit um you know we're seeing who's gonna get those crits who's gonna get those combos in dropping a combo here is obviously gonna be fatal um really really close fight and I do secure the kill. Now, if you look at the points, I'm at 480 now. I'm going to go off the screen and finish an Ice Guardian, which should give me enough points to complete the match for a victory. Yeah, so just to talk a little about the buffs and, uh, and uh, hoarding points, there's a big... It's completely dependent on the style of... Uh, the style of play certain players will have. I initially only purchased the 50 points buff and stayed with that and did not purchase any further buffs. However... Balad did purchase a total of 250 points worth of buffs, and so that gave him a large advantage in a, a lot of those fights. So there's a big dichotomy when between do you spend your points to purchase buffs or do you hoard it to try to save up to 500? That's just it boils down to the type of player you are. And you see over here the defeat screen for me. I actually get a trophy for losing. Mine's a little bigger trophy. I still get a trophy. So it just basically runs down the score, and if it was a rated game, you would see how much rating I get. Um, Balad has an equal screen to show uh, what he obtained during the fight. All right, guys, we want to thank you for joining us. Uh, subscribe, like, share, follow us, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, you know the story. Uh, please post on the forums. We definitely want to hear your feedback. If you want to see some live streaming things going on with the ladder system, if you want to see us doing more update reviews uh, through video, uh, please let us know. We definitely want to deliver this custom tailored content to you guys that you like. That is our passion. That is what we do. We love our community. Thank you so much for everything. So just want to reiterate how uh, crucial your feedback and criticism is welcome. Uh, we hope to do future content updates and uh, similar videos in the future. And we hope you're uh, really excited for the new update just like all of us. 
So we'd like to thank you for tuning in and have a nice day, guys.